Open fire. Now that I have your attention. Welcome to the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chiss Ascendancy. Hey, we got a banger of an episode for you guys. <laughs> uh, episode 75, we're talking all about Sith rule. And so we're going to get into that before too long. But I wanted to do a real quick unboxing for you guys. Um, I guess unboxing is not really the real work, so I'm not going to open anything up. But I just want to show you guys some recent pickups that I've gotten uh, as a Star Wars collector. So if you are just listening via audio, I'll do my best to describe them as if I was uh, reading an audio book. And if you're watching, I hope you enjoy the show. So let's just get into that. First things first, I uh, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but I love the sport of disc golf. I uh, disc golf pretty often. And um, one thing that I've always thought was cool was uh, you can buy Star Wars discs as well. Um, but of course, it's the typical like... Millennium Falcon, Darth Vader, and not that those things aren't cool, but I wanted something more tailored to myself. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is I worked with a guy named Shane Michael Venus, and he has a Facebook page called Shane Does Discs, I believe it's called. Um, and I want to show you some of his work. Maybe some of you guys who are listening are uh, disc golf guys as well or gals. Um, and I want to show you some of these that I got, and I'm just super happy with them. Um, so I, what I did was I got all putters or mid range discs that way I wouldn't lose them. Um, but I'll just show you my couple ones that I got. So for these putters, I got three of my favorite characters. I wanted to just be able to, um, show people, you know, Hey, this is one of my favorite star Wars characters and it's on a putter. So, and they came out awesome. They look sick. Uh, so I wanted to get a discraft Luna. I just like the way they feel. And, uh, here's Darth Bane. Super cool. And this image is from the new Secrets of the Sith uh, book. I'm trying to get it without a glare from that camera there. Super awesome. Um, and then secondly, of course, the Grand Admiral himself. We wouldn't be the Chiss Ascendancy without the Grand Admiral. Um, so there's Thrawn right there on a putter. Looks awesome. This is from Rebels. Super cool. And then, of course, my very favorite character of all time, Boba Fett. And uh, this is, a, it says a fistful of credits, and it's kind of a playoff of a fistful of dollars with Clint Eastwood. Super duper cool. And uh, and then, this one's probably my favorite. It's not my favorite character, but the way it turned out just looked amazing. This is on a mid-range, uh, or a it's kind of an approach disc, an Innova Pig. And look at that distinguished gentleman. Freaking Jar Jar. And it's, it comes from a tie-dye t-shirt. So it's the tie-dye t-shirt look. With three pictures of Jar Jar on there. Just amazing. There's an up close one. There's a very valiant one where he's throwing a spear. And then you've also got the crazy uh, long tongue, you know, kind of look. Uh, and of course, last but not least, also on a pig is the podcast logo. Super cool. It's kind of hard to see with the camera, but it's got this white backing to it. So you can see the yellow and the red. Chiss Ascendancy podcast with the chimera on there. On this disc super awesome i'm super pleased with them uh so if you play disc golf and uh maybe i said the facebook page wrong or something if you are interested in that please let me know um and then a couple of figures came in uh this is from the credit collection from hasbro his black series and this is the mandalorian so the cool thing about the credit collection is uh basically if you'll look on the card back here of the of the figure you see uh, artwork from concepts. And so, you know, obviously concept art is very vibrant, very extreme. Um, a lot of times stuff that's in the actual show is toned down from how crazy the artwork can look um, when they're just doing storyboards and stuff. But the cool thing is you get uh, interesting paint. You have the silver there and then his visor is blue. The cape is blue. And then if you can, if you're watching, you can see one gauntlet is blue and the other one's like a purple, very metallic looking, just super cool. And then I actually got lucky enough to score um, another couple of Black Series figures. I haven't gotten anything crazy 375 here recently. Um, I'll do another unboxing of my Hasbro Pulse um, haul that I got with some cool 375 stuff in there from my vintage collection friends. But I got the Black Series um, 
crosshair. Imperial crosshair looks super awesome. Uh, that helmet is just instantly one of the best helmets in Star Wars. Super cool. And the green that kind of has the Death Trooper look to it. Uh, amazing, amazing figure. And uh, yeah, on the box it says crosshair with Imperial in parentheses to let you know what's up. And then also from the Bad Batch, I got the Black Series Rex. And he's got his cool, um, his cool poncho on there. And uh, as my buddy Skeleton Astronaut sent me a meme of the other day, what is Star Wars besides cool guys and ponchos? So you got Rex with a poncho, and he's the cool thing is he's got that uh, visor, uh, kind of similar to what uh, the 3.75 inch Devis from way back in the Revenge of the Sith days. So just some really cool stuff. Uh, and so I thought I would just add some of these segments in here. So for those of you fans of figures or books or whatever. Um, I thought it'd be cool to add some of that stuff in there. So when a new book comes out or a new figure comes in, something cool like that, obviously these disc off discs are very uh, unique. And I thought I'd just uh, do a little unboxing moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think we'll move on to a new segment that we're starting called This Day in Star Wars History. The podcast is kind of a weekly thing. Uh, we were gone there for a while, but we're trying to stay a little bit more consistent. And so there's sometimes that some days that are important to Star Wars history are going to pass us by um, between those days and things like that. But we're going to try to stay up to date on this. Um, but as of today, I'm recording this on Wednesday, November the 10th. And so four days ago on November the 6th was actually a pretty iconic day, at least for me and us here at the Chiss Ascendancy. Um, an iconic day because on November the 6th, let me bring this up here, um, at... Cad Bane's Bounty on Twitter posted this, but it says, it's a quote here from Timothy Zahn. Um, I was just, it was just after four o'clock on November 6th, 1989. That's 32 years ago, guys. How wild is that? Uh, just after four o'clock on November 6th, 1989. And I was three days into writing my first novel for my new publisher, Bantam Books. When the phone rang, it was my agent, Tim. He said, after the usual pleasantries, we have a very interesting offer here. And obviously, he's talking about hashtag heir to the empire. And so this past uh, weekend, the 6th of November, is the 32-year anniversary of the concept passing Tim Zahn's desk of writing heir to the empire. And uh, man, what a crazy task. Think about that, that you're the guy that they come to and say, hey, Star Wars feels like it's been left behind. People are forgetting about it. People are, are, are moving on to other uh, stuff. Let's get Star Wars back on the map. You're the guy that we want to write a book of all things, you know, because you get you got to think TV, uh, TV shows, you know, obviously TV existed <laughs> 32 years ago. But um, the level of show that would have brought people back into the fold like the Mandalorian, um, it wasn't capable then. And the money necessarily wasn't there to do something that big and crazy. And so they went to Timothy Zahn, who's an obviously well-renowned um author and said hey let's get these guys back in the fold let's make star wars interesting again let's get people excited again and so uh 32 years ago um who who man i can't even imagine the process of i'm going to make a character that inspires loyalty through respect i mean that's that was the big line from uh, the Book of Boba Fett trailer was, of course, Jabba ruled through fear, but there's going to be a mutual respect here that I'm going to inspire. And does that mean he's going to be the talent card replacement? Who knows? Uh, but but Timothy Zahn really started that. The first Star Wars character that was uh, certainly a villain and a great villain at that, but a respectable villain that you almost felt yourself rooting for. I don't think anyone in their you know, sane mind minus you know just chaos theory folks, uh, I don't think anyone in, in Return of the Jedi was thinking, I really want the emperor to win this. You know, I, I don't think anybody felt that way. In fact, I think people were pretty shocked when, when Darth Vader was the one that saved the day and saved Luke. Uh, so imagine a, a villain that is the bad guy. He's, he's opposite the chess table from Luke Skywalker, Han Solo and Leia Organa. Yet you find yourself pulling for him. You know, you're interested. Who is this guy? And that's Thrawn. And so just so cool. I actually have here with me, a buddy of mine gave me this, um, it's an Heir to the Empire uh, tape, a cassette tape. This is volume or part two, so I don't know if there's only two parts or what, but this is super, super cool. Uh, 1991, Lucasfilm Limited, 1991, Bantam Audio Publishing. Um, how cool is that? 
Phantom Audio Publishing was located on 666 Fifth Avenue. So thank God we're with Del Rey now, huh? <laughs> the devil's publishing these books. Uh, but Heir to the Empire on cassette, super cool. I don't have a cassette player, um, but it's just cool to have a piece of history like that. And so that has been this episode's rendition of This Day in Star Wars History. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. This is episode 75 of the Chiss Ascendancy. Uh, as you can see right here, we're talking about the subject that Sith rule, guys. I mean, I love the good guys, but everybody knows that Sith rule. And uh, I'm glad that we don't live in that universe where they rule, because obviously they're not nice guys. And maybe you're thinking, hey, Joe, I know that this is your favorite character, but what's with the hat? And uh, I say, you know what? It's a nice hat. What are you looking at? It's a nice hat. And maybe you don't like my glasses. Military. This is my briefing goggles. But you know what? This is what I want to wear. And this is what I'm going to do. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about the Sith today. Um, it all kind of stemmed from some news that we had going on. And it felt like every news item um, since the Book of Boba Fett dropped, um, that there's just so much stuff surrounding the Sith. And they're... Their power to inspire loyalty within the community, um, it can't be denied, it can't be overlooked, and uh, I think Sith are just, they're so interesting because they're not a dime a dozen, um, and they just have a crazy story, and so uh, let's get into a little bit of news to talk about what's going on. So obviously we talked about our, uh, this day in Star Wars history already, but um, of course, like I said, weekly, weekly podcast, so sometimes our news is a little bit late trying to get better at that um but from delray star wars this is on instagram it says you want it we got it the next round of trade paperbacks and the essential legends collection will be available april 5th 2022 each edition will have a new cover with original artwork in addition to the new cover wedges gamble will also receive an all-new unabridged audiobook edition which i'm sure uh wedge fans and x-wing fans are uh, huge fans of um but just look at this lineup I mean, you're looking at this. Kenobi, obviously fantastic. We're super stoked about the Kenobi show as well. Uh, Wedge's Gamble. Um, obviously, Wedge is a fan favorite, but that that book and that series in itself um, within the book community is not niche. But if you walk up to uh, your local Half Price Books or Barnes & Noble or wherever you buy your books that's not Amazon – and you look and you see these four books. Kenobi's the most recognizable probably. Um, but then if you see this and you see Darth Plagueis and you're thinking, hang on a second. I've seen memes about this. Uh, Wedge's Gamble looks cool. And then you see Dynasty of Evil. I mean, just the just the titles themselves are so cool. Um, and Darth Plagueis, I love the new cover. I do wish that Plagueis was more in the four. Um, I get that if you've read the book that obviously Palpatine has a lot to do with the story. I get that. Um, I believe Plagueis by James Lucino was the first time that we ever learned that, uh, Palpatine's first name was Sheev. So those are cool things. You know, I get that. I do wish that Plagueis was the focus of the title or I mean the, of the cover. Um, but it's all good. And then here on the far, on the far right, you have dynasty of evil, which wraps up your, uh, your Darth Bane trilogy. Darth Bane is um, one of the most fascinating Star Wars characters of all time. Um, and it's it's crazy because he's just a book character. There's not really that much about him besides a tiny appearance in Clone Wars. But those of us who are book fans of Darth Bane, uh, even when he showed up in Clone Wars and had the new samurai look, we were all like, hang on, he should be tall and bald with black eyes, you know? Uh, so it's just cool. He, he inspires so much loyalty. And um, so I think that that's just so neat that we're finally getting that trilogy in the new um, in the new cover and uh, it's cool because if you have audible if you listen through audible um, when this new cover will come out for both for i mean for kenobi plagueis and dynasty of evil obviously wedges gamble is getting an audiobook but it hasn't had an unabridged audiobook um, up to date uh, so that's gonna be the first time we see that cover but the new covers for these when when the fifth comes of april in 2022 these covers will replace the current covers. So when you go to look, instead of having um, Bane and Zana from the original Dynasty of Evil cover, you'll see this new artwork, um, which is pretty neat. But again, of these four books, you know, the three that make 
the most sense as far as what sells. Again, outside of the already existing Star Wars book fan community, uh, Kenobi's the most recognizable, but Plagueis and Dynasty of Evil for me stand out. And those are the ones, if I was a new Star Wars fan and I was a new reader, those are the ones I would choose. Um, and it's because of the Sith. It's because of who they are. It's because of their mystique. Um, speaking of mystique, another thing of news is that uh, it says Matt Smith finally confirms his Rise of Skywalker character. This is from denofgeek.com. Uh, I've just got it in reading mode now, so I don't get a bunch of annoying pop-ups. Um, but this is really interesting. I'll move myself up here so I can just kind of scroll. hope I'm not annoying you guys in the middle of your screen. Um, but, dude, check this out. It remains one of the biggest mysteries in Star Wars. Who was Doctor Who veteran Matt Smith set to play in the Rise of Skywalker before plans changed? There were plenty of rumors and theories at the time as to whom Smith would play in the conclusion of the Skywalker saga, but until now, the actor has never even confirmed he was in talks with Lucasfilm about the movie. He goes on to talk about, um, did he film things that were later cut? He never did. I don't even think he got to fitting. Um, but it says, based on Smith's account, it's possible he was being uh, tapped to play a character in Trevorrow's version of Episode Nine, but when director was replaced by J.J. Abrams, Smith's role was scrapped in the process. Indeed, one of the many theories concerning Smith's mystery character is that he was set to play the Sun, a celestial being from the Mortis realm and the physical embodiment of the dark side, presumably making an appearance in the final act of Trevorrow's movie, although the character doesn't exist in the first draft of Duel of the Fates. And, uh, I mean, again... The father is cool, the daughter is cool, but the son is just fascinating. And the son's struggle with um, with the desire to rule Mortis and the desire, you know, you love your father, you love your sister, but that, that darkness inside to try to take over yourself, um, that's totally Sith. That's totally the dark side of the Force. And for some reason, I don't know if it's because... Um, again, we don't live in universe and we're th their decisions don't affect us. Uh, but those dark side characters that just struggle with that inner turmoil, um, maybe it's because they're more likely to let loose when it comes to their power. Maybe it's because they're more likely to, to show us something we haven't seen before. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's cool to see Yoda in episode two, attack of the clones. It's cool to see him take on count Dooku. It's cool to see him, uh, do flips and things. Uh, but I was never as in awe of someone using the force like I was the first time that I played through um, and watched people play through the force unleashed with with Galen Merrick, a.k.a. Starkiller. Um, you know, it's kind of a giveaway that the cover of the game is is, uh, you know, him pulling or at least one of the main images they're putting on the Internet where it was him uh, pulling the Star Destroyer out of the sky uh, which is the most annoying phrase from the game as well. When you're struggling and you're trying to button mash to pull the Star Destroyer out of the sky and you hear Rom Kota going, pull it out of the sky! Pull it out of the sky! It would be funny if they recorded. <laughs> Imagine the, the voice actor from Rom Kota records four or five different ways they're getting increasingly more agitated. So the first one's real inspirational teach teacher to, uh, to learner. Come on, son, pull it out of the sky. And by the fourth or fifth time of failing, going, Come on, you son of a gun, pull that freaking thing out of the sky. Gah! That would just be fantastic. But there's a rabbit trail from Joe. Uh, but the force being used by Galen Merrick in The Force Unleashed is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, just the first level when Vader is on Kashyyyk, and it's like, oh, there's one of the most powerful uh, sentient beings on the face of the earth. Uh, Wookiees and their and their race being obviously you know physically uh, imposing and then next thing you know he's like you know you hear the force sound of Poof, and it's just like a freaking herd of Wookiees are just flying across space um, just so cool and the whole game is based around this character who is just OP specifically in the dark side of the force um, but if you look at this like let's just do a little rabbit trail here and look at um, Star Wars Mortis uh, do characters. I mean, when you look at this, you know, they're all cool looking. They're all super, super OP powerful. Um, but to me, the sun is just way cooler looking than the other two. Um, you know, here, here's from rebels, 
this is something that you see some art um, and you've got you know can I zoom in here you got the father here in the my heavens you got the father here maybe I can do this uh, let's see open image somebody a new tab there we go oh yeah I would like to allow is that here's hoping god thank god for that pop-up <laughs> wasn't something crazy but look at this i mean the father obviously is very authoritative he's kind of he's cool looking the 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 coolest part about the daughter is the the i once called i think it's called morai the owl looking character that kind of goes around ahsoka a lot i wonder if in the ahsoka series we'll finally kind of unpack what that's all about or if it's just feloni showing favoritism but the son um just his emotion and you know, hats off to Sam Witwer for that performance because everything he does, he just puts a 10,000% emotion into. Uh, but, you know, the, the emotion he puts into the sun and the struggle, but the the struggle to remain in family is completely overshadowed by his desire to rule and, and take power. And so, man, what a cool character. Um, and so that kind of takes us to our next article, the uh, one of the other greatest Sith ever, um, probably one of the Star Wars characters that has the most fulfilling um, and complete storylines and story arcs is Darth Maul, and um, this is from the first of uh, this is from the first of November. So I'm, again, guys, I am so late to this, but I want to talk about it. Um, this is from Cinelinks.com, but it's been on multiple websites. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just go to. Can I do? I'm going to do a couple of preferences here for y'all so you guys can see what this looks like. Um, Cinelinks. I'm going to go ahead and put read version on so I don't have to look at any dumb ads. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Uh, new Star Wars animated series to focus on Darth Maul's shenanigans. You would think with terminology like shenanigans that I wrote this article. It says, according to multiple sources, it looks like a new Star Wars animated series is already in the works that could fill in some of Crimson Dawn slash Darth Maul gaps. I know uh, we're still recovering from the Book of Boba Fett trailer, but had some information come in I thought would be worth discussing. Uh, about a month ago, I heard from a source that voice recording was underway for a new, as yet unannounced, Star Wars animated series was going down. Now, here's the thing. It's the 10th of November, uh, pretty late at night right now, uh, but... I believe on the 12th of November is Disney Plus Day where they talk about invest and you talk to investors about upcoming projects and things. And as an adult, you know, it's become like Christmas for us because we're like, OK, maybe they're going to talk about new series and things like that. So as soon as two days from now or maybe a day from now, if I upload this tomorrow, uh, we might get n actual news from Star Wars and Disney about the series potentially. Um, it says this, along with the second source, informed me that familiar Star Wars voice actors D. Bradley Baker, which is the voice of the clones, um, if you're not familiar with uh, the casting for the Clone Wars and such, Matt Lanter, who is Anakin Skywalker, and Sam Witwer, who plays everybody else under the sun, but mostly known for Maul. He also did play the sun, and he's uh, the motion capture actor for um, Starkiller from The Force Unleashed. So he's a huge Star Wars guy, and... Uh, for those of you who are fans of Solo, A Star Wars Story, Ray Park, shout out to Ray, came to reprise his role as Darth Maul, and Sam Witwer did the voice. And for Season 7 of Clone Wars, uh, Ray Park recorded motion capture for the fight scene with Ahsoka in the Mandalorian throne room, and Sam Witwer again provided the voice. So that would be awesome. Uh, this goes on to say, I couldn't pin down what they were recording, whether another Bad Batch season or something else. So just kind of let it sit and was hoping to get more information later. Thankfully, that's come in from a pair of independent sources who tell me that Darth Maul will be the focus of a new animated series. So this is just awesome. It's focusing on Maul and, you know, what happened to him after Clone Wars pre Solo a Star Wars story. And you know what? I'm such a fan of Star Wars animation, especially since Dave Filoni's at the helm of that. And I 100,000% trust Dave. I would love um, a show that follows Maul um, pre and post Solo. Like, I would love a movie. I would love, you know, now that things are starting to kind of fizzle out as far as restrictions and we're able to go to the movies and stuff again, I would love um, a movie. But... I would also love a Disney Plus show. You know, we've talked about this before where I will 
semi-reluctantly, depending on what the character is, trade a movie going experience for more content. And, you know, that kind of started for me with the Kenobi concept. Thinking about, I wanted a Kenobi movie. I wanted to go to the theater to watch an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. But let's be honest, no Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, <laughs> Obi-Wan Canoodle, spaghetti meat sauce. Um, no Obi-Wan Kenobi movie was going to be three and a half hours. Um, I just don't see that happening. I don't see that world being something we live in. But I can see a four-part, six-part, eight-part, ten-part series. Um, what they're going to do with that time, I have no idea, but I'll take it. And that's more content for me. And you know what I can do? I can bring a Blu-ray of, you know, a Disney Plus series I've burned or something, and I'll rent out a Dagum Theater myself. Um, so for this new animated series, you know, I'll trade a movie-going experience for a longer animated series. Uh, and I'm one of those guys that I'm such a Star Wars nerd uh, that it doesn't have to be a live action series, you know, an animated series. If that means I get Matt Lanter and Dee Bradley Baker and Sam Witwer, please, you know, that's like being like, Hey Josiah. So you've got to go on a diet. All you can ever eat is Whataburger. Uh, no problem. I will happily do that. All you can ever eat again is wings. I will, I will succumb to that. No problem. So, uh, I'm such a fan of Star Wars animation that I have no problem whatsoever, uh, with, being a part of this universe that we're living in. And uh, so I'm excited about that. It's a new, it's a new animated series. And again, this is not confirmed through star Wars, uh, but the sources are pretty strong as my understanding. And they're people that people who have gone through this before really trust. And, uh, and hopefully as of this Friday, November the 12th, we'll have a confirmation and maybe we'll have to do a real quick video just talking about that. Um, but a lot of awesome stuff in the works. Next news article um, is from Hollywood Reporter. It says Patty Jenkins' Star Wars movie Rogue Squadron is delayed. And um, and actually, since this article came out, uh, it says that it's been delayed indefinitely. Uh, it said with the goal of starting production in 2022, it's gone into pre-production by the end of this year. And um, it's saying that it has a release date of December 22nd, 2023. And while that currently remains in place, dates can always shift. So here's the thing. Since this article came out, um, Rogue Squadron has been delayed indefinitely. And I hear you, Rogue Squadron fans, X-Wing fans, um, you're disappointed. But that news brought more news. And that more news was uh, Star Wars The Old Republic movie rumored for impending release. Um, this is from the direct.com. And... Um, if you're watching via video, if you're a YouTuber, um, these are some of the characters from the Old Republic um, role-playing game. You have um, Satil Shan, which is the Jedi Grand Master during this uh, period in time. You have Jace Malcolm, who is the super bad-to-the-bone uh, Republic, um, you know, heavy infantry kind of guy. You have... Shea Vizsla, which is that super cool Mandalorian um, that helps infiltrate the Jedi Temple. And you know what? I cannot... Vin Zallo, I want to say is this guy's name. If I am 4 for 4, I'm going to be so proud of myself. Um, but Vin Zallo, I want to say he's not the Grand Master, but he's like, you know, he's a super, uh, super powerful Jedi. And um, and this is, the, this is the era in which uh, the Old Republic role-playing game took place. Um, and so let me read you a little bit of this report. The future of Star Wars is beginning to look clear for the next few years. Disney plus series will be carrying the franchise on the visual media front. The book of Boba Fett is set to debut on December 29th and following it shortly thereafter should be the highly anticipated Obi-Wan Kenobi series in May. I'm really hoping for a trailer this Friday but I can see a moment where maybe they'll release a trailer after Book of Boba ends. I'm not sure. We'd be so close to the release then. Maybe they'll release it this Friday. Who knows? Later in 2022, Star Wars Andor and The Bad Batch Season 2 will also drop on the streaming platform with The Mandalorian Season 3 reportedly rounding the year out. It is going to be a powerful peak year for Star Wars. Imagine being a Star Wars fan that only likes their era of Star Wars. Like imagine being, you know, in your whatever 40s or 50s or 60s and being like only my Star Wars exists. 
I just don't know why you would rob yourself of that experience or being uh, a person my age that maybe you like the prequels more, but you love the original trilogy, but you hate the sequels and you refuse to watch animation. I just don't understand why you wouldn't do that. If you like to read, why don't you read Star Wars books, read Star Wars comics? Like it's such a rich universe. You can, there's so much to immerse yourself in and there's people who are on purpose. It's like they like the attention of being butthurt, you know, and they're like, well, no, I'm not going to like it. I just, whatever, dude. I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to totally forget you exist. Uh, it says, presumably, the Mandalorian will experience a carryover into 2023 akin to the uh, to Boba Fett this coming December. From there, the likely follow-up would be Ahsoka, which is rumored to be begin filming as early as December. Also on the slate for 2023 is Leslie Head- Headland's The Acolyte, now speculated to release later in the year, a rumored animation series about Darth Maul that we just call, uh, covered called Crimson Dawn would be amazing. And that makes sense because if you followed the War of the Bounty Hunters comic series uh, that I begin, I believe they're beginning to uh, wind down, um, it's all about Crimson Dawn um, coming back after um, – coming back after – it falls apart after the death of Maul at the hands of Obi Wan Kenobi, and it says, "And potentially Lando." Where things stand for this uh, theatrical films is a bit more complicated. Last winter, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy announced that Patty Jenkins would be writing and directing Star Wars Rogue Squadron, um, but that has been um, delayed. And so it appears there may have been a change of plans. Word of a secret Star Wars film broke recently, and the outlook on the franchise's theatrical future has now changed entirely. The old Republic film coming in 2023 as Rogue Squadron is delayed. Um, And here are four characters. I don't know this little guy's name down here in the middle. But here are four characters that are essential uh, to the Legends continuity for the expanded universe. On the far left, you have Darth Nihilus, who's the Lord of Hunger. We've done a podcast about him before. In the middle, you have Darth Malak, uh, who's a total turd. And then you have uh, Bastila Shan, who saves Revan from the dark side of the Force. And then on the far right, you have one of the baddest Sith to ever walk any planet ever, uh, which takes me to my next subject. It's Darth Malgus. Now, this is interesting to me because this goes to another piece of news. Um, but uh, the Star Wars Insider for, um, uh, dis- I want to say it's for December, um, Star Wars Insider issue number 207 uh, has Darth Malgus on the cover. I'm not, I don't think this is the main cover, but this is another one you can buy. And it makes me wonder... Is this just, hey, this is a 10-year anniversary, you know, of Star Wars The Old Republic in which Darth Malgus is one of the main antagonists? If you'll recall, there was that trailer. There was a video game trailer called Deceived and a whole series of trailers that came out from that um, talking about, uh, you know, that voiceover, you know, for 300 years we waited, we grew stronger, you know, that that kind of thing. they freaking fly a shuttle into the Jedi temple with a billion Sith inside. Um, and Darth Malgus to me, you know, this whole episode's about Sith and how cool they are. Darth Malgus to me is just one of the coolest characters because, um, he is an embodiment of the dark side of the force. And I know that you had Revan or the revanchist or however you want to pronounce it. That's supposed to be kind of like the Messiah of the dark side. Uh, but to me, Malgus almost fits that role better. And I'll explain why. Um, I really feel like Malgus is, um, he gets the dark side more. Um, Revan clearly is struggling, you know, back and forth. Yeah, the whole memory wipe thing, which is kind of shady for me. Like, we're going to erase your bad memory so you become a good guy again. But that's neither here nor there. Um, With Malgus, he cannot comprehend why, during the era of the Old Republic, if we've just sacked the Jedi Temple, why does this now become a political thing? Why does this now become – why is this a bargaining tool? We've just destroyed – you know, one of the greatest Jedi fighters they have in Vin Zalo. We've just taken over and sacked the Jedi Temple, the headquarters of the Jedi and all of the galaxy on Coruscant. And you want to use this as a bargaining chip for a peace treaty. He doesn't get it. And, um, and Malgus is the kind of guy that, um, he has a love interest. And, uh, if you've not read the, the, the novel deceived, um, I guess you could 
stop the podcast now and go listen to that for 12 hours and come back. Um, but if you don't want to know some of the, you know, finer details of towards the end of the book, I guess you can go ahead and pause here um, and, you know, just listen to another episode or whatever. Uh, but Malgus has a love interest who's this toilet girl. Um, she's the only person who knows his real name, his first name and, and calls him by it and things like that. And, uh, he truly loves her, but he realizes to serve the dark side of the force. He can't have anything that's blackmailable. He can't have anything that stands in the way of just being able to be purely used by the dark side. And so there's another Sith that knows he's romantically involved with his, with his servant, with his slave girl. And, um, I want to say his name is Adras, I believe is the other Sith Lord. And so Malgus, because he loves this girl to set himself free from this murders his love interest. And I know if my wife is watching this, she's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Every time I talk about it and I'm just like, I admire this guy. I know she's super worried. Like, is Josiah going to murder me for the greater good some way down the line? The answer is no, I'm never going to murder my wife. Uh, but it's just so crazy that, um, you know, you've got this character in Malgus who murders his, his betrothed, murders his loved one for the sake of the dark side of the force. And, uh, and that's Sith. I mean, that is Sith for you. That's everything that they embody. That's everything that they are all about. And, uh, so to me, that's why, uh, their characters are so much more compelling and, and that's the future of Star Wars. I know that the good guys need to win. I know that at the end of the rise of Skywalker, there was no way that Kylo Ren was going to pull Rey to the dark side and they were going to have this beautiful dark romance together and just destroy everyone. And they're both going to serve Palpatine or Palpatine was never going to be able to absorb their force dyad and rule from that. Uh, I know that good has to win and I agree. And when it comes to the real world, you know, I'm so glad that good wins, but there's something compelling about the dark side users in Star Wars. And, and, and they know that Lucasfilm knows that they, they're going to have the good guys win. They're going to have, you know, Cad Bane can't just capture Omega and turn her in. That doesn't make sense for them. And I, and I get that the story needs to end on a hopeful note. Um, but uh, I, I love that they realize, you know, what sells Darth Malgus, you know, what sells uh, Darth Maul. So since Darth Maul sells and since the dark side sells, uh, it, it makes me wonder, you know, I always really struggled with, I know in the real world, we should, we should choose right over wrong or light over dark, or, you know, however you want to, to put it. But, um, in star Wars episode five, there's this moment where Luke is training on Dagobah and he asks, Yoda is the dark more powerful and Yoda is so quick to say no almost to a point where it seems like he's being defensive in a sense that he knows it is more powerful but he's gonna say no you know what I mean like no 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 way no way like almost like when you're in in, in elementary school and like you like that girl and it's like I don't like anybody I, I don't even like myself you know it's it's like a denial almost and uh, he says it's it's quicker easier more seductive um but if that's the case and Yoda's supposed to be, you know, for especially the original trilogy and for the, I guess, especially the prequels when you got to see him kind of almost in his heyday, um, it makes me wonder, like, if this is the ultimate guy, he's the grandmaster, you know, he's the wisest, um, perhaps Mace Windu is the more powerful swordsman. Obviously, Obi-Wan Kenobi has the, maybe the greatest balance as far as wanting to negotiate but versus wanting to fight and things like that. But if Yoda's supposed to be the head honcho and he doesn't really hold a candle to Palpatine, is the dark side more powerful? And I, I, I'm not talking about in real life. You know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a pastor by trade. So I believe, you know, that, that good is, is more powerful. And I don't think there's no rivalry between God and the devil. You know, I, I, the Lord is, is definitely far and away greater and stronger. But in the Star Wars universe, in this fictional world that we dive into and that we really uh, we love so much, why is it that the dark side seems more powerful? And is it because the characters are more interesting to write? Is it boring to have a Superman character that's OP? Uh, you know, for me, Superman's so boring as a character because he's almost unbeatable and he always does the right thing, it seems. And I think that's why um, there was that video game that came out a while back. Was it 
Gods Among Us or Injustice or something like that, where Superman kind of goes rogue. And that was such a compelling storyline. Again, because he kind of turns bad for a second. And and I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there's something to that. I don't know. Maybe it's the human element in us wanting to not feel bad about ourselves. So we identify with the bad people in movies and things. But, you know, why is, you know, why is, why is Boba Fett's armor so compelling and uh, a Hoth rebel guy is not compelling? You know, is is it because the armor just looks cool or is it because the character that he's able to finally capture Han Solo after everybody's been trying for two movies? I don't know. But I do know that at the end of the day, Sith rule and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. And so, uh, hey, we'd love to get your opinion on some of this uh, stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, share this video. If you have a favorite character, or if you think Josiah, that opinion sucks, the light is always better than the dark. The, the dark side characters are compelling. I don't like Darth Vader or Darth Maul and Luke is my favorite. Hey, I love Luke. Um, but his struggle in the light is some of the best writing ever. And so if you have a favorite character that's light side or dark side, or you have something that you want to say, please, please sound off in the comments. We'd love to interact with you guys. And uh, if not, and you're just ready to get back to everyday life, thank you so, so much for tuning in. And remember, the Force will be with you always. We'll see you next time.